Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, so, uh, uh, I uh, briefly I, I turn off my camera because it takes bandwidth, so it's not very uh, pleasant to uh, have bandwidth just for have my picture on your screen. So I take my camera off, and. Uh, so we uh, yesterday we saw that the uh, uh, that uh, there is a function h depending on the probability vector p that is written like that. Well, in fact, with some constant here and uh, the logarithm in any basis, and this uh, function is uh, what is called information in, uh, in, by, by Shannon, but it's exactly the same function that is called entropy in physics. And uh, we showed yesterday that this function is uniquely uh, determined by four axioms, is the unique function that verifies the four axioms uh, we stated yesterday. Uh, now suppose, uh, now I, I'll, I'll give you uh, some, uh, an interpretation of this function. Uh, the first interpretation is that the uh, uh, entropy or information is a kind of expectation. And uh, I'm joking that is an expectation that makes us older. I explain this in, in a moment. So you have an uh, X valued random variable whose law is determined by some probability vector. And you define a random variable C that is uh, the uh, logarithm minus logarithm of P of X. Uh, do you understand what, what, what I mean, I'm meaning by that? Yes, it's a function of random variable. But, but it's, it's a function of a random variable. Yes, but, the, but the function, the precise function here is the low of this random variable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so you have a random variable that is distributed according uh, to, to the low, to the, for, for, to the probability vector P of X. That means P1 up to PM is the probability mm -hmm. vector. And uh, so, uh, Every time you uh, apply this, this vector on this random variable, so it, depending on the value of the random variable, this takes uh, a new value minus logarithm of p. Uh, so uh, the, uh, I, I'll come in, in a moment again in this, in this problem. So here I have forgotten a minus sign. Uh, so there is a minus sign missing. So the expectation of this, uh, of this variable is minus the expectation of the logarithm of p of x. So I write it down and it, it gives you h of p. Why uh, I am doing uh, uh, such a, a, a fuss about this uh, function? Because in, a, in probability theory, the uh, expectation is uh, a linear operator that acts on uh, random uh, variables and gives you something, and the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, 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 measure with respect to you to which you 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 uh, uh, integrate defines a linear form on the on the on the on the, uh, on the set of of uh, random variables. So you here you have lost the linearity because both uh, the uh, the, the uh, uh, integration measure and the random variable you have to integrate depend on P. So this is a, a not, not linear function. So this is not, not a usual expectation. So you have to keep this in mind. And so what, what, uh, why I'm saying that it makes us older because Boltzmann, Boltzmann related this irreversibility, uh, this uh, function with ir uh, irreversibility when this uh, function is positive it's essentially an, an irreversible process. 
And since uh, the process is irreversible, for instance, life is, is an irreversible process. Otherwise, there is no evolution. Uh, uh, so because life is an irreversible process, this expectation makes, makes us older. So that's just for joking. And so uh, now the uh, past the second interpretation of the uh, function H. Uh, the, the entropy is the mean number of questions, binary questions, you, uh, make, you must ask in order to determine uh, the uh, outcome of the random variable X. So suppose that you have a random variable X taking values in some set. Here I take a five element set with this probability vector. So how do you determine uh, how many questions you have to ask in order to determine uh, wh what was the output of the of the uh, the outcome of this random variable so uh, the idea is the following S try to separate this uh, set of of uh, uh, of points x1 to x5 in such a way that the probabilities of the subsets are almost equilibrated so here i ask first is if is the function, is the random variable X taking values in the set X1, X2? So you see that X1, X2, if I, I look at this uh, vector here is uh, uh, 0, 5. So the co complementary set will be also 0, 5, 0.5. And so here I have uh, make, uh, made a question that is quite equilibrated in probability. So either the, the question is yes, or no, and these two uh, branches happen with probability one half. Now, when the answer is yes, I can ask, is the function x taking the value x1? And again, I uh, uh, say yes or no, and now uh, it will be yes uh, if uh, the, uh, sorry, do you understand what, why I have here 0, 06 and 0, 04? The probability? A conditional yes. probability. No? Sorry? A conditional probability. Right. You have, uh, you have already uh, taken uh, here the, uh, the, uh, uh, the set with probability 0, 05. So this is, will be a conditional probability. And so uh, again, I have equilibrated the conditional probabilities. And the answer will be either yes. And in that case, I have determined the value of the variable X, or it will be no, and I, in that case, I have again determined the value uh, of X. Uh, and uh, I go through the other branch. Through the other branch, I ask whether the probability, the, the random variable takes value X3, either yes or no. If yes, I have finished. If no, I have to make an additional question. So, uh, when I'm in the in this uh, magenta uh, uh, boxes, I have totally determined the the, uh, the outcomes of the random variable, and I have also I know also the probability. So a very important thing is that if I compute the uh, entropy for this probability vector, this entropy is two point twenty seven, and on the other hand, I can uh, uh, compute the average number of questions I have asked. Uh, in order to uh, determine the, vari the, uh, the uh, variable. So here I have done two questions, two questions, two questions, and here three questions for these leaves there. So if I multiply the number of questions I have done by the corresponding uh, probability of the leaves, uh, so here, here is the number of questions and here is the probability of the leaves, so in red in, inside in every box I have written uh, these quantities, then you, you determine that the expectation uh, number of uh, the expected number of questions is 2.3. And you, you observe that these values are very close to one another. Uh, if I had the chosen here uh, as a probability vector, uh, a probability vector where the probabilities are inverse powers of two, in, in that case, I should have complete agreement between HP and uh, E of N. 
Uh, here I have not exactly the same thing, but I have something that is bigger than the, uh, than the entropy. But in, uh, uh, we can show that uh, if uh, instead of asking uh, things about one random variable, I ask about a pair of random variables, an independent pair of, of independent copies of X, two independent copies of X, I shall have for every uh, uh, variable, I shall have some, uh, some uh, other expected number of questions that will be closer to HP. And if instead of pairs, I ask about triples of uh, uh, copies, then I, I can again be even closer to HP. And in fact, it can be shown that asymptotically, when you ask a, 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 a big number of independent, uh, if you uh, are looking about a big number of independent copies of X, and you, 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 you uh, compute the number of questions you need per variable, this will converge to HP. So that, uh, th that's a, a very important thing in, uh, in uh, 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 information. The number of questions you have to ask in order to determine a random variable is always minorized by the, uh, the, uh, the entropy. And in fact, you can approach uh, the, the value of the entropy at the end. Is it okay for everybody? Do you, did Mr. you understand? Can, can you repeat in which limit do you both quantities approach? Yes. Uh, uh, so if I start, uh, if uh, here I, I have uh, reached to this value 2.3, 2 that is close to 20, 225, but it's not exactly 225. Yeah. So now instead of, of looking on, on, X, on X, I'm looking now on pairs, independent pairs of X1, X2. Mm -hmm. So now the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the set in which this uh, uh, variable takes, uh, takes values will be the Cartesian product of X with mm -hmm. itself. And if I'm looking at the uh, joint probability vector, this joint probability vector, so the probability that x1 is equal to x and x2 is equal to y will be p of x1, sorry, p of x, uh, p of y. So I have also the joint prob probability vector. Now uh, I can compute. Uh, so I know I, I call this kappa of x, y. This is a joint probability vector. So for this joint probability vector, I can compute the uh, entropy. This will be two times, two times 2 20, 25, 27. And now uh, I ask questions, I arrange questions in the same scheme, but of course more complicated because now I have more questions to ask uh, to, to determine the value of the pair x1, x2. Mm -hmm. And now I, if, I, if I compute the number of questions I need, it will be uh, something that it will be between, between 2, 227 and 223, 2.3. The expected number of questions will be inside this set, closer to the to the lower bound than there. That means that if the number of questions per variable you, you, you ask is less than previously, but always bigger than 2.27. Now, instead of asking uh, questions about pairs, you ask questions about triples, then you approach again even more to the uh, value of the entropy. And at the end, at the limit, when you ask infinitely many questions uh, and you take the, uh, the, uh, the entropy per, quest, per variable you have used, then you reach precisely the limit H of P. Is it clear or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. The, is there any, any other question? Not for now. Now we pass to the third uh, interpretation of the entropy. The uh, entropy is the logarithmic ratio of typical over total configuration. This is a very important uh, thing. So uh, I have to 
to do some uh, preparation about notation. So suppose that we have a random variable uh, on a finite alphabet, A. So without, uh, if uh, the cardinality of A is M, or without, uh, uh, without uh, uh, loss of generality, we can suppose that A is isomorphic to uh, the set of integers from one to M. And then in that case, P will be just the vector uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, M components. Uh, now, uh, the law of X is given by probability vector. And uh, for arbitrary uh, integer, I consider the random variable I, I denote by uh, bold X. Bold X will be uh, also depends, depends on N and will be uh, N independent copies of X. So X1 to Xn. Obviously, uh, the uh, bold face X is an element of uh, the uh, set A to the power N. That means Xn is a random word having N letters over the alphabet A. Is it clear? Yeah. No? Yeah. So X is a random variable in, uh, on, on the set A. That means the uh, uh, X takes values in, in A. So that means X will be, if A is equal to uh, zero or one, for instance, bits, then X will be uh, zero with the probability P zero. Sorry. and P1 with probability P1 will be one. So the, the meaning of these two phrases is precisely this. If X takes values in, in a set of bits, for instance, it will be like that. If it takes uh, in the uh, normal alphabet, it will be the probability of obtaining every letter. Now I consider N independent copies of X is it the same thing I did uh, uh, I did before for the question. So here I have X1 is distributed according to P, X2 is distributed according to P, X3 is distributed according to P and so on, independently for, uh, from uh, one each other. So now I have an uh, 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 tuple of random variables I denote by uh, X bold indexed by N. And uh, of course, this, this uh, uh, end up belongs to A N. That means if I interpret this like letters, the elements of A like letters, then X bold will be an N letter word that is random because it's random, uh, randomly chosen on the alphabet A N. Is it again not clear? Mm -hmm. Is it clear or not? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now for a fixed, uh, and now forget about random variables. I'm looking on uh, just words on the alphabet A of N letters. So alpha bold will be the antiple of N letters chosen in this alphabet, some fixed uh, word. Now I, I, I count for every letter of the alphabet, I count how many times this antiple contains this letter, is, is equal to this letter. And this number, this is just a number, and this number will be between zero and, two, and n. Is it clear or not? Yeah. Now, due to the independence of the random variables, if I'm looking uh, for the probability that X bold equal to some given alpha like that, 
this will be the uh, product that is here. Clear? I, I, I'll do an example in, in just a moment. And in that, uh, uh, I uh, also can compute the probability that, that this number is equal to L for L between zero and 10. And I compute this number. So uh, maybe uh, make an example here. So uh, take N equal to five, A, the alphabet of bits and alpha bold, uh, let's say the uh, sequence one, zero, zero, one, one. So this is a five letter word, five letter word on the alphabet A. And take as uh, uh, letter A, the letter zero, for instance. So what will be new zero of alpha? This will be the sum for i equal to one to five because the length is five of the, the number of times the word takes the value uh, zero. That means here I compute uh, the, this sum will be two. And if I take nu one of alpha, exactly the same and here I have to change And here I have three. So you see that the sum of, uh, of uh, the sum of mu a for alpha is always equal to n. <clears throat> now, uh, if I take a random variable x, five, five letters, so x one, up to x5 and these random variables x1 to x5 are independent and identically distributed so this is will arise very often in my talk from here so I have the abbreviation IID, meaning independent and uh, uh, identically distributed. Random variables. So again, I use the abbreviation RV for random variables. And the probability, that means that uh, such that the probability of XK equal to A is just PK of A. P, sorry, PA, PA. Now, what will be the probability of X being equal to alpha? For X and alpha words of, of size five. So that, that means that I, I ask whether X1 to X5 is equal to alpha one up to alpha five. And this is, since the, the variables X are independent, he, he, here, th this means by the way that probability X1 is equal to alpha one, et cetera, up to X5 equal to alpha five. But since the, pro the, the random variables are independent, the, pro the, uh, the probability of this intersection here is equal to the product of the, of, of the probabilities. So this will be P of X1 is equal to alpha one up to P X5 is equal to alpha five. Clear? Questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's clear. Any question? It's okay. Sorry? Good. 
Okay. So now uh, uh, come to the situation where alpha is, is this one. So alpha is this sequence. What will be the answer here? So alpha one is equal to one. So alpha one is equal to one. So that means here I have uh, P one. Alpha two is equal to zero. So it's P zero. Alpha three is equal to zero. So it's P zero. Alpha four is equal to one. So it's P one. Alpha five is equal to P one. And so you see that you can rewrite this, uh, this product here as P zero to the power new zero alpha. P1 to the power nu1 alpha. So uh, the uh, uh, terms, I, the, the quantities I determined before, n0 and n1, serve to uh, express the probability in a more compact way. Good? Any question? No. Now I come to the question, what uh, will be? So here now I use a random variable. So th this will be a random number. This is the, uh, the uh, number of times in the sequence, in the random sequence X1 to Xn, I find the letter A and I ask whether this is equal to L. So you see, if I have a random sequence of, of length n, if I have a random sequence of length n, I can find zero times the letter i, I can find one time the letter a, up to n times the letter a. So the L here will be an element from zero, can be an element from zero to n. So what will be uh, this probability? Uh, Dimitri. Yeah. Uh, so the meaning of this probability would be uh, the probability to find that the, uh, the, the frequency of C in the letter A is L in your message? Uh, no. Uh, I I I I I'm tossing. I'm I'm tossing the the coin n times, so th this gives me a, a sequence x one, x n. So this is a random sequence. So uh, so and now, I'm counting how many times I have the letter a in this sequence. Yeah. Okay, so this will be a random variable because X are random variables. Every, every, uh, every realization of the, of the end tosses of the coin gives me another number. So this is a random variable. Is, is it clear okay. or not? Okay. okay. Yes. And now uh, 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 this random this random variable because this is just a number of a, a cardinality of of, uh, of the number of times you encounter the letter a in the sequence. If I have a sequence of, of size n, the letter a can be can appear a, a, any number between zero and ten. For instance, if I have uh, suppose that instead of looking uh, on bits, I look on, on letters on the alphabet and uh, I have a sequence X uh, that takes the value, uh, uh, so a bracket up. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven letters. So if this is a sequence of eleven letters. And now uh, I'm looking. What is the, pro the what is the number of times I I encounter the, the letter Z in X? This is zero. Uh, the number uh, of times I Y in X is zero. 
the number of times I'm counting A in X is one, two, three, four, five. But if I, if by chance I, 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 I find another, uh, another word, this, for this other word, the numbers here will be different. But anyway, uh, the, these numbers cannot be less than zero and cannot be more than n. N the, is the, the, the uh, size of the sequence. So the, the possible values of, of uh, repetitions of the letters is uh, the, of appearance of the letters is between zero and 10. It's not clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's clear. Okay. So in order to calculate the probability, you would have to consider all the options to rearrange your characters, right? When okay, so uh, what will be here? We have to consider the probability to find each of um, to find the letter A. You, suppose you have um, um, L letters A in your message. So the probability of this uh, certain message would be L to the L, no, PL, no, PA to the L and one minus, minus PA to the, to the N minus L. And also con consider the combinatorics, no? The yeah, of course, you must, you must uh, also take into account the combinatorics. So um, uh, come, come again, it's, it's easier to come again to the case of bits. And uh, now uh, I, uh, I, I, I define a new set. This is the, the set of sequences of size five, such that the letter one, because here I have one, the letter one is equal, uh, uh, appears L times. If I, uh, if I am looking on, on one, it's enough to sum the ones to get the, the number of terms. Uh, sorry. So what is the cardinality of this set? More generally in N here. What is the cardinality of, of uh, the sequence of N letters? So here maybe generalize N, N, N. So what is the cardinality of this? I have, I have for every choice, I have, I have two possible choices, zero and one. So this will be the uh, uh, number of uh, uh, ways I have to choose L among N. So I have to choose uh, here L uh, uh, once among the N possible values. So maybe you don't know this, this symbol is uh, used in the French literature and the uh, Russian literature. I don't know uh, your habits. In, in the uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon literature, it is written like that, but this is the same. Is the number of ways to choose L among N. So now I have finished because the probability of having uh, this number equal to L, this will be equal to the Cardinality of this now of this set. Sorry, n one. And here will be p one to the power l, and p zero. But p zero is one minus p one to the power n minus l. So I have finished. I have computed completely. I have determined completely the law of the uh, of the of this random variable. Is it okay? So this is the uh, formula I have written here. 
Good. Now, uh, again, some uh, horrible notation. It's more convenient to work because I have to take limits. It's more convenient to work with infinite words. That means alpha in the set of a to the power n. That means infinite sequences of, of, uh, of words and infinite random sequences. That means x1, x2, etc. And the uh, uh, way to, to, to consider finite uh, words is just to index up to n and sum up to n. So here uh, I have an infinite sequence and I'm counting how many times the letter A appears in the n first letters of the sequence, nothing else. And I'm using the notation restriction to the n letters of alpha and the restriction to the n letters of x to denote the restriction of the sequence to the n first letters. Now, uh, the uh, uh, important thing is that uh, the, uh, uh, if, I, if I compute this quantity for every letter of the alphabet, I have a collection of, uh, of, uh, of uh, numbers. And this collection has how many elements, as, as many elements as the uh, elements of the alphabet. So new n, I, I denote by new n the vector, in some sense, whose components are the, uh, the, the numbers I have computed here. And if I divide by n, since the sum of these numbers for all the letters of A will be equal to n, if I divide this vector here, will have some, uh, will sum up to one, and this will be a probability vector. So this is a probability vector depending on the uh, uh, sequence alpha you have chosen. So this probability vector is called the type of alpha. I is it clear or not? Yes. Uh, I, maybe I come back again. Sorry. Uh, I had already written something like that. Yeah, I had read, uh, shown that the uh, the number of of uh, uh, the letters of the of the of the times you find the letter a in the sequence alpha will be equal to n. So if I divide by all these numbers are positive. So if I divide by n, one over n, same sum of over over a new alpha of al new a of alpha, it, this will be equal to one. And since all these numbers are positive, uh, then new zero of alpha up to new n of alpha, this will be a probability vector. So is what I'm, I'm saying here, nothing else. So this is a probability vector and this probability vector is called the type of alpha. Clear? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, defining the notion of typical configurations. So suppose that n is a fixed integer, a a finite alphabet, p a, 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 a probability vector of this alphabet, and k a fixed integer, strictly positive. A, a, a word, alpha of n letters over the alphabet A is called typical, more precisely n, p, k typical, if the following thing happens. If uh, I uh, count the number of words uh, of uh, the, if I count the number of times the letter A appear in the word, in the n first letters of the word, and I subtract n times p, p A, and divide by some term that uh, for the moment I don't explain. This is uh, for every A, this is bounded by a constant K. Otherwise, if for some letter, 
this inequality does not hold, then the, uh, uh, the word is atypical, atypical. And the set of typical words will be denoted by T and PK. So these are the, uh, the uh, words uh, who, who are the uh, uh, numbers of each letter, the number of times each letter appears, fulfills this, this, uh, uh, this, this bound here. Now, if I uh, divide uh, by, by N, this uh, inequality here, I can write also like this. And you see that that means that the, uh, uh, the number of times I have found letter A divided by N, this is a kind of empirical probability minus the theoretical probability of getting letter A is something, this is a constant, but one over N, uh, square root of N. That means when N is large, this number will tend to zero. So typical words are those words where the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, they, they contain uh, every letter with some preset density of letters. So the, pre the, the uh, density is determined by P. So typical words depend on the probability vector, but they are not themselves uh, random. So here I have just words, alpha. Alpha is just a, a, a word. And uh, I am looking for all the words verifying this, this uh, condition. These words are not random. They are just a uh, set of words that verify this bound. Is it okay? So they are like kind of, uh, how do you say? Uh, Central limit theory? Yeah. What? Central, uh, law of large numbers of- uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, of but also the property, the property of, of being typical is like, like the probability, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, any, any other uh, remark or question? No. Okay. So that's a very important theorem. It is called the asymptotic equipartition property. So it says you the following thing. Uh, if I cho I'm choosing some epsilon, strict, strictly larger than zero and strictly less than one, and some k that is uh, an integer that is minorized by the cardinality, the square root of the cardinality of a, that's just technical. Then for all n sufficiently large, so larger than k, the probability that this random sequence is not typical can be made up, uh, arbitrarily small. Now, uh, for every alpha in the typical sequences, the probability that xn is equal to a typical sequence is uh, morally exponent two to the power n uh, 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 entropy of p. So you see here I have something that depends on n, and here I have something that depends on square root of n. When n is large, for instance, 10 to the power n, this is one um, uh, the uh, the number of bits that are in a, a USB stick, it's just one giga, uh, gigabyte, this is eight times 10 to the power n bits. So when n is 10 to the power n, nine, uh, square root of n uh, will be uh, uh, 10 to, to, to the power uh, 4.5. And this is negligible before, uh, in front of uh, 10 to the power nine. So the main term here will be uh, essentially the term of, uh, uh, that is proportional to n. So provided of course that h is not zero. So that means that uh, uh, the probability that a random sequence is typical is essentially uh, this, this number here. And the other thing is that the cardinality of the set of typical sequences is like that, is two to the power n to the power hp. So you can forget about delta n, delta n is some small numbers. 
small number. So maybe say two words about the significance of, uh, of uh, this theory. So to fully grasp the idea of, of, of this theorem, you have to consider some astronomical uh, situation. So a USB, I, what I was saying that the USB key is one gigabyte. That means uh, eight to the power 10 to the power N, nine uh, bits. Now, uh, uh, two to the power 10 to the power nine is 10 to the power three times 10 to the power eight. So uh, I, I cannot work with this kind of numbers because I can explain nothing. So uh, uh, let's start with a, a very small uh, set. So A will be bits. And I take sequences of length only thousand, not, not 10 to the power nine, thousand, thousand bits. Now, already A to the power N is two to the power thousand. And this is already uh, something like 10 to the power of 300 to something like that. So already the, uh, there are enormously uh, many words of uh, size thousand binary words. And I'm choosing as P the vector zero to two, zero eight. So that is the probability of taking zero and that is the probability of taking one. So the, the, uh, I can compute now the uh, entropy of this vector. This will be 0 0.72. I fix some epsilon uh, in, the, in the theorem before, uh, 5%. That means 0, 0, 0.5. And I'm taking K as in the theorem, cardinality of A over epsilon. This is two over zero, zero, five. And this is 6.32. I'm computing N P A one minus P A square root. This will be thousand times zero two times zero eight. And this is 2.6. And so if multiply the two, I get 79.6, so let's say 80 to have some in, uh, uh, whole number. So for, so this will be K. K is, will be, uh, so uh, this will be uh, a K. So what, what does it mean? That means for, for alpha in the typical sequences, like that, uh, by the law of large numbers somehow, mu uh, zero of alpha will be 200 plus 80, plus or minus 80, and the new one of alpha will be 800 plus or minus 80. Now, as I told you before, uh, this theorem gets the full flavor when n is sufficiently large of this of this size here, and you, you understand that the, uh, when I when I go to these sizes here, the correction I have here is negligible. So I can uh, take that uh, the uh, I can forget about these corrections. Uh, I can forget about these corrections. Now, what this theorem says: the first. Uh, claim of the theorem is the, the, that the cardinality of the typical sequences over the uh, cardinality of all possible words is approximately uh, two to the power of thousand times 0 0.72 over 
2 to the power 1000. And if I take the numbers, this is will be minus uh, 2 to the power minus 280. That is 5 times minus 10 minus 84. So that means that if I depict the set AN like that, the set of typical sequences is a really tiny subset, really uh, the number of, of uh, the, the, the proportion of, of configuration into the typical set is uh, ridiculously small. It's the, the, the ratio of the cardinalities is some ridiculously small number. So typical sets are very small in, in cardinality. However, argue, uh, claim B of the theorem says the following, if Xn, X1 up to Xn are uh, independent and identically distributed according to P, then the probability that X is in a typical set is bigger than 95%. So although this set has a ridiculously small cardinality, it carries practically the whole probability mass. So I write it, this is because it's important. And the third claim of the theorem is the following. For every alpha in the set, in the uh, typical set, the probability that X is equal to alpha is equal approximately to two to the minus 720. So this is, uh, can be shown that it, it, it will be equal to the cardinality of T and PK. That means uh, the probability of taking any word in the typical set is the same for all for all words. So this is uniform probability. Uh, you have a, a, a uniform probability on this set. So that that's who, uh, that why that's why it is called asymptotic equipartition property. So. This theorem is very important uh, because uh, it gives you an efficient way to compress information. Mm -hmm. It says that the typical word are, uh, you have interest to encode the typical words by short codes and the atypical words, words by long codes. So the codes that you will use to encode the words in, in the typical set Will be uh, will give you small words, and uh, here we can't even lose and have enormous words. But this practically will never will never will never happen because the probability of of uh, of being out here is only is less than five percent. So, did you un understand the uh, uh, meaning of uh, the importance of this theorem? Is it okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is it? so uh, I think that I, I, I skip the proof because uh, I, I'm already late in my program. So, uh, if we have time at the end I'll, uh, uh, of the of the course, I'll give you the, the the proof of this theory. It's not it's not difficult, but anyway, it, it takes some time to. To, uh, to 
take the proof. Now I uh, go to some easier things, so properties of the entropy. Uh, the uh, entropy, of course, is positive because uh, if you, uh, the, the minus sign is precisely there to uh, ensure positivity because uh, P is probability, so it's between zero and one, so logarithm is negative. So the, the minus sign here is just to remove the negativity of the logarithm. So this is what is always positive. Now if you have, uh, you have a technical lemma that is very useful, that if you have two arbitrary probability vectors on the same alphabet, then uh, the sum here is always majorized by the sum where you have replaced the P by Q here. And the, the proof is extremely simple. So I give you below the, uh, the function T log T is a concave function on R. So a concave function is like that. So it has the, uh, has the uh, curve below. And uh, so uh, that means that the, the function will be below the graph, the graph of the function will be below the graph of the tangent to the, to the function at any point. So uh, I'm taking the tangent at, uh, at one. So the tangent at one will be, uh, has, has a slope equal to one and is equal to zero. So it's like that. And so the concavity means that the graph of the function is always below the, the, the tangent. So that means log t is always less than t minus one for all t positive. And so uh, p uh, logarithm of uh, qa over pa, it will be uh, just uh, less than p, p a, qa over pa minus one. And so we conclude uh, that uh, if I plug in uh, this here, so it's p, uh, so this can be written as uh, sum uh, PA log QA over PA. And we, this will be negative. And so this give you, gives you the proof of this inequality. Is it clear? This is just convex analysis, nothing else. No answer. So the uh, this will serve you to uh, prove an upper bound on the, uh, on the uh, entropy because we have already the lower bound that is zero. And now we have an upper bound that is the logarithm of the uh, cardinality of A. How do you, 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 you prove this? You use the previous lemma uh, uh, with Q equal to uh, the vector one over the cardinality of A for all A, that means the uniform probability. And uh, when you plug uh, this uh, vector in the previous inequality, you get immediately this uh, bound, upper bound. And uh, it this inequality will be an equality if, uh, if and only if P is equal to uh, the uniform vector over A. So the maximum probability, the maximal, sorry, entropy is uh, logarithm of one, uh, uh, the logarithm of the cardinality of A. Now, another, uh, another thing we can define, another quantity we can define uh, in uh, respect to, to entropy is what is called kullback leibler contrast or relative entropy also. Uh, if P and Q are probability vectors on the same alphabet, uh, P will be absolutely continuous with respect to Q, we write, we write like that. If uh, whenever P A is equal to zero, uh, uh, whenever Q, Q, A, Q A is equal to zero, then P A is equal to zero. Uh, that uh, uh, means that uh, this ratio PA over QA uh, is uh, well defined. You have not division by uh, positive over, over zero that would give you uh, infinite term. 
So uh, you define the uh, the uh, uh, kullback library con contrast between P and Q to be this quantity. So if P is absolutely continuous with respect to Q, then if you have this uh, ratio, otherwise you define this to be infinite. So again, you can prove that uh, the, uh, this kullback leibler uh, contrast is positive for arbitrary PQ. It's not symmetric, so it cannot be a distance. May, uh, very often it is called a kullback leibler distance, but it cannot be distance because D is not symmetric. Uh, nevertheless, it serves to uh, discriminate between P and Q because the larger this, uh, this contrast is, the uh, more different P and Q are. Uh, I'll skip probably this, what time is it? Yeah, I'll skip this thing here. Uh, so I can uh, uh, study the um, kullback leibler contrast for Markovian evolutions. So suppose that Xn for n uh, varying over the integers is an irreducible in the periodic Markov chain on a denumerable space X of, and stochastic matrix P. Uh, by the way, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, are you, uh, uh, do you know uh, elementary Markov uh, uh, chain theory? It would be good for us to review a little bit. Uh, okay, so in that in that way, maybe before, before stating the theorem, just uh, uh, review uh, something element. Maybe don't speak about the infinite denumerable, but only finite denumerable. So Markov chains. Maybe. So finite one. So uh, I consider a sequence of variables that are not independent. So this will be finite set. Uh, I interpret this integer here, indexing here, as kind of time. So maybe time uh, measured in seconds or something, something like that. And uh, these random variables are not independent, but they have some uh, very uh, con constrained uh, conditional dependence. If I'm looking at the position at time n plus one, conditioned on the positions the, uh, the uh, chain had on all previous times, this pro conditional probability will be equal to the probability of x n plus one equal to y, given that x n is equal to x n. That means the, uh, the position at time n plus one depends solely to the, uh, to the position, uh, on the position you had at time n. All the previous times have been forgotten. The position you had in all, all the previous times have been forgotten. So this is the Markov property. This is the defining property of uh, Markov chain. Uh, now, in fact, since everything depends on these uh, uh, conditional probabilities, I introduced some notation for this. So uh, I denote by P of X, Y, the probabil conditional probability of X n plus one being equal to Y given that X n equal to X. So uh, uh, be careful about the inversion of the, of the, uh, of the order of X and Y here. And uh, so the collection of this will be an X times 
X matrix. With terms, And moreover, uh, this matrix has a very important property. If I look, I'm looking on the uh, sum of the elements of a row of this matrix. So I, I'm, I'm summing the element, the second, the second component. So I'm summing the elements of a row of this matrix. This will be equal to one for every x. Do you see where it comes from? Normalization, no? probably. Sorry? Uh, because of normalization, no? because the probability must be normalized. Exactly, because, because this sum here is the sum of the conditional probabilities of xn plus one equal to y given xn equal to x. So here, uh, anyway, you, you must go some, somewhere. So uh, you are summing over all possible positions for x and plus one, so that they will be equal to one. And the uh, the uh, main thing here is that you can uh, represent this this uh, uh, this matrix very uh, easily by uh, some uh, uh, directed graph. P is uh, in bijection with some directed graph. I give you just an example. Suppose that two friends uh, are, uh, take, are playing head or tails and uh, uh, so uh, the, uh, the total fortune of, the, of these uh, friends is fortune of A plus fortune of, of B. So let's say that the total fortune is L euros. Uh, and so they start the game, they start playing. So zero and then one and then L minus one and then L. So at every time they toss a coin, if, the, if the, it's heads A loses a euro, so that means B wins a euro and vice versa. So that means that you can represent uh, this game in that way. So that goes up to here. Here it goes like that. And here you are uh, the uh, the uh, uh, this uh, player is ruined and all the uh, the, uh, the for fortune is for the other and the same thing here and so so the, this is the graph the directed graph corresponding to the uh, to the Markov chain that is known as gambler's ruin. Now, uh, uh, I uh, define the notion of uh, irreducib irreducibility. So for X, for every X and Y, if for every x and y, there exists an integer that depends on x and y, such that the nth power of the uh, of the function of the matrix n has element x y strictly positive, then the chain is called irreducible. The meaning of this is that. If I'm looking at the graph, the directed graph of the chain, if I'm choosing two arbitrary nodes of this graph, there is a strictly positive probability to go from one to the other in a finite time, in a finite number of steps. 
for instance, for gambler's ruin is not irreducible because you see that if I'm going to zero or to L, then I stay there forever. Once I am at zero or L, I can never go back to the other nodes. Though this chain is non irreducible, it's a reducible chain. And uh, the uh, chain will be called strongly irreducible. If there exists a capital N, there exists positive alpha such that the minimum of P n x y, the minimum of x and y is equal to alpha and is, equal, is strictly positive. So another, uh, I'm, I'm running out of time and I have not finished the second, the, um, Uh, I, I, I see uh, some uh, question of uh, Unde Adyaha uh, uh, that I don't understand. Uh, if there is abnormalities, can the explanation you give still hold? What kind of uh, abnormalities? Uh, are you here, uh, Monday? Yeah, we are here. Yeah, what kind of abnormalities you are thinking about? Okay, I'll, I, I'll ask later. So uh, let me. Uh, so yeah, there is a question in the chat. Uh, of course, you can chat. Uh, you see uh, the email the chat? Uh, and, and, uh, I, I'm seeing the, what, what you wrote in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the chat, yes? Uh, ah, okay, okay. Uh, variation, variation in data, what, what kind of variation in data? Adaya, can, can you precise your question, please? So you, you asked me two questions. The first one is that if there is abnormalities, can the explanation you give still hold? And the second question you asked is, can a function go, uh, go convex to R plus, uh, especially for uniform inequality? And uh, I don't understand the two questions. Can you be more precise? I think you can't speak, you can just write. You can write. So I think you can continue. If you okay, so. Just, just a, a more definition, and that I stop because I, I'm, I'm running out of time. And th then after, afterwards, I discuss with Monday. So, definition. Uh, so again, X n is a Markov chain. Uh, a generalized random variable. That means taking values, not only in integers but also taking possibly an infinite value is called the stopping time if for every n the event t to generalize variable t t equal to n is completely determined by the values taken by x0, xn. That means that does not depend on xn plus one and so on, on feature. 
and give you an example. Uh, suppose that uh, Xn is the temperature, every, every day's temperature, at day n, n of the year, at a given place. And I'm asking about the first time, sorry, the first time, the first day in the year where this temperature is bigger than 42.2. If uh, with the convention that the infimum of the empty set is equal to infinity. So uh, this is, a, this is uh, a stopping time because in order to, to, to uh, ask whether Xn is big, with, whether T is equal to M, it's enough to see the temperatures between the days one and M. But if I am asking, T prime to be the uh, infimum of n such that xn is the maximum of the year. The maximum temperature of the year. Of course, this is not a, a, a stopping time because to, 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 to answer whether t equal to m, I have to know not only past uh, past uh, temperature, but also future temperatures. So this uh, the, the, this uh, uh, notion of stopping time will be important when we speak about the Turing machine at the, at the last lecture, and when uh, we are going to speak about uh, uh, Ko uh, Kolmogorov's complexity. So I think that I have al already uh, passed time, so uh, I have again not finished. Uh, what I was planning to say, and so I stop here. Is there some, is there some question for Vladimir? For Vladimir? Uh, okay. For Dimitri. Mm -hmm. Sorry? For Dimitri, no, for Vladimir. Ah, for Dimitri, yes. Yeah. All these question names are complicated for me. So what? Uh, what is Sorry, the question? No, no, no. There is no question about it. So there is no question. There, there are no question in the room. But no, there is one. There is one. There is one. Yes. My question is, is there any relation between... Uh, please please uh, be more close to the microphone. I don't, I don't hear. Come here. Microphone is here. Sorry. What was the question? Uh, is there any relation between the Markov chain and the dynamics of a system as they are depending on the last step as for the Markov chain probability. So a, a dynamical system is, yes. is a, a special case of Markov chain in the sense that the uh, stochastic matrix, the matrix P I, I was writing is uh, what is called a deterministic stochastic matrix in the sense that in every line, there is only one position where this matrix is equal to one and all the other elements of the line are zero. So this is again a stochastic matrix. It has this pro property that every line sums up to one, but it's a very special uh, uh, matrix in the sense that it's deterministic. And this is uh, precisely, defines precisely a dynamical system. So uh, dynamical systems are part, special cases of Markov chains important class of special cases. Other question? Okay. Is there any other question? Okay, I look in the chat. Uh, in the chat, there, this was the question of, uh, of Monday. Ah, yeah, so there's still this question. Okay, uh, so you can try to maybe to speak directly with this man. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Dimitri. Can you okay. once again send, send me your? Uh, I, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send the transparencies. Yeah. Perfect. So for all the students, I'd, I advise you strongly to because there is a lot of material in this lecture. So I advise you to, to read this afternoon or tonight because we don't have a lecture. The lecture before tomorrow. It's a very short time, I know, but 
Tonight we don't do soccer, so you, you have time. <laughs> we have time to you have time to read the lecture in order to profit because the lecture, the, all the lectures are very good. Also the general lecture. So I I would advise you to try to profit uh, by working the nights. Not so not not too late, but by working a little bit. <laughs> okay. So Dimitri, thanks very much. Thank you. Very we, will, we will go to it and we see you tomorrow morning. Okay. See see you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it's on my I will look at it. 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 I